Israeli media are reporting mediators are making progress on a possible week-long ceasefire between Israel and Hamas. The agreement reportedly includes the release of dozens of hostages held in Gaza, as well as Palestinians imprisoned by Israel. Now, Israel's war cabinet met to discuss the proposal last night, but there's no official word on what they decided. However, several Israeli media outlets say it approved the deal and that Israel will send a delegation to Qatar. Hamas says it has not yet been involved in the latest proposal developed by the U.S., Egypt or Qatar, but the reported outline largely matches its earlier demands for the first phase of a truce. The Palestinian Ministry of Health says over 80 people have been killed in the past 24 hours. The Ministry of Health in Gaza says 131 people were also injured in the attacks. The ministry says the total number of people killed since the war began more than four months ago in Gaza has now almost reached 30,000 people, with some victims still trapped under rubble or left on roads. The Israel Defense Forces say that two soldiers were killed Saturday, bringing the number of IDF troops killed to 239. Around 1,200 people were killed in Israel when Hamas attacked on October 7th. Hamas is recognized as a terrorist group by Canada and other Western nations. Now for more on the ceasefire negotiations and the happenings overseas, we're joined live by Nader Hashimi, professor of Middle East politics at Georgetown University. And Nader, thank you for joining us this morning, sharing your insights with us. I want to start off with these latest ceasefire talks. They seem to be moving pretty well, according to Israeli media. My question to you is, what makes this agreement seemingly so much different than others that have been uh, denied in recent weeks? Well, I think the big difference is the urgency of the situation. Um, you know, we're four and a half months into this conflict. Um, uh, the situation in Gaza is catastrophic. Eighty percent of the people facing um, famine and catastrophic, catastrophic hunger worldwide are to be located in Gaza. You have the Israeli hostages. You have global outrage over what's happening. So there's a sense of urgency that I think are pushing these talks forward. I think the basic outline for um, what's on the table right now is very similar to previous um, deals that were on the table. There was a similar deal a few weeks ago that fell apart. Um, and I think the broad contours of, you know, this particular, um, uh, uh, you know, temporary pause in hostility in exchange for hostages is very similar to what we saw in November. Um, uh, a pause in fighting for some period of time, an exchange of uh, both Palestinian and Israeli prisoners on both sides. Um, and then, um, you know, a sense of um, a greater humanitarian aid going into Gaza. And then we have to see how things develop after that point. To talk a little bit more about past negotiations, Hamas seems to have really been pushing for a permanent ceasefire, not just a temporary one. But this one does call for temporary. Uh, does this leniency on Hamas's end, who at this point says they haven't seen this negotiation, this contract yet, uh, does that show that they might be bending a little bit to the will of Israelis? Uh, possibly. Um, you're right. The previous deal that fell apart a few weeks ago um, did um, entail a demand by Hamas that there be a sort of a permanent ceasefire um, and an Israeli withdrawal from the Gaza Strip. That's obviously not going to happen. Um, so I think it does suggest what you uh, have proposed, and I think it should really a reflection of you know what's 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 happening in Gaza today. Um, Hamas is under tremendous pressure by the Israelis. Um, um, I think it's to their benefit to sort of I think have a pause to regroup. Um, to ensure that more humanitarian aid gets into the Gaza Strip to try and, you know, recalculate where things stand. So that is a good observation. We'll have to wait and see um, whether, number one, this deal goes through and what the actual specific details are. But I suspect, um, you know, every side, uh, both the Israelis and the Palestinians, in this case Hamas on the Palestinian side, they have incentives um, to try and sign on to this deal. And I think in the next couple of days, we'll find out whether it's going to have any legs or not. Let's talk more about that humanitarian crisis in Gaza right now. Ramadan is just around the corner, of course, a holy month for Muslims around the world. How can we see this war, this lack of food, the food insecurity crisis affecting people celebrating in, in Gaza, in the West Bank, but also in Jerusalem, at Al-Aqsa Mosque? Yeah, I think it's probably going to heighten tensions. Um, you know, the, the humanitarian crisis is um, it's just catastrophic. You know, I just read a report um, issued by the U.N., uh, about a, about six weeks ago that said, quote, every single person in Gaza is hungry. Uh, that was six weeks ago. Two weeks later, um, Canada and many Western countries decided on very dubious evidence 
uh, put forward by the Israelis to cut off uh, humanitarian aid to the lead um, UN organization that provides aid to the Palestinians, UNRWA, just you know exacerbating this particular crisis. And so, um, I think as we get to Ramadan, there's going to be a renewed focus, um, probably heightened concerns, animosity, and tensions uh, in the region. And I also want to point out part of the problem here is not just sort of um, you know Western policy toward Gaza, which effectively is you know collaborating with Israel to advance a policy of uh, mass starvation, but also the leaders of the Arab and Islamic world, you know, they could easily have stepped up to fill in the void uh, for funding of the UN agency that provides aid for Gaza if they wanted to. There's a lot of a lot of money in the Arab and Islamic world, particularly these Arab Gulf states. Uh, they've chosen not to do so, which just highlights the fact that the Palestinians today are completely on their own, abandoned by the West, but also abandoned by you know the corrupt ruling elites in the Arab world who haven't done um, very much to alleviate their suffering. So this is a catastrophe, primarily for the Palestinians and obviously for you know peace and security in the broader Middle East. Let's talk a little bit about the broader Middle East before I let you go, Nader. Uh, in Lebanon, we've seen increased fighting along the Israeli border, but more specifically in southern Lebanon. Can you talk about why we might be seeing this escalation happening now? And could we see it continue even if a ceasefire is put forward uh, by Hamas and Israel? Yeah, it's one of the main flashpoints that, you know, people are focusing on in terms of concerns over the broadening of this war. Um, uh, Hezbollah and Israel have been trading fire. There's basically been a low intensity sort of conflict since October the 7th of last year. Um, there's deep concerns that this could sort of lead to an expansion of the war um, into Lebanon. Uh, so that's one flashpoint. I was just watching the news today. The BBC is reporting renewed American and British airstrikes on Houthi targets over um, shipping in the Red Sea and, and access to the Suez Canal. So that's another flashpoint. And of course, if you're following this story, um, earlier this month, the United States uh, responded with a series of, you know, over 100 airstrikes on Iran-backed uh, militia groups in Iraq and Syria after three American soldiers were killed. So the region is on tender hooks. And all of this goes back to Gaza. And in my view, much of this has to be laid at the doorstep of the Biden administration, because just last week they vetoed once again for the third time a UN Security Council resolution that could have put it put a halt to this moral obscenity that we've been watching for the last uh, four and a half weeks. So Biden has a lot to answer for, and you know the, the world is watching this this catastrophic situation um, unfold. If we get this you know truce and exchange of prisoners for hostages, that will provide some temporary relief. But let's uh, let's all be clear: we are a long, long, long way away from uh, this crisis being over. Important insights there, Nader Hashimi, a professor of Middle East politics at Georgetown University. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thank you.